Hello, hello, beautiful. Welcome to day two of the Incoming Paper Challenge. I'm Susanna Kay, and I'm super excited that you're here for me with me this week. This week, we are talking about how to build a system for all of your incoming papers. So your mail, all the stuff that you bring in from the car, the stuff the kids bring from school, and this is all in the action file. So this week, we are walking through how to build your own action file from scratch with most of what you probably already have at home. All right, really quickly, I want to say good morning to Sherry. As you hop on, let me know who you are and where you're joining me from. I love to see you here, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so today we are talking about how to assemble your action file, including I told you a couple of the basic folders yesterday, but I will tell you some extra folders that you might want to add. And we'll also talk about some additional supplies that you might want to try out within your action file. So today is about putting it all together, super fast, super easy, but this is the day that's going to matter the most. If you don't ever put it together, then you can't try to use it, right? So this is the day where the rubber meets the road. Are you ready for this? Awesome. Yay. Well, we also have Pamela's here. Hi, Pamela and Barbara and Melanie. Welcome, welcome. She says, needing a break from the world today. So here I am. I'm so glad that you are taking your break with us. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. So like I said, today we're talking about building your action file, putting it all together. And this is part of the Incoming Papers Challenge. This is running from October 17th through 23rd. It's free. So if you've not already registered for the Incoming Papers Challenge, make sure to head over and register. The link is in the video description. But when you register, then you will get access to the challenge schedule page. You will also get the quick daily tasks sent to your email each morning just to make it a little bit easier for you and some extra support and guidance along the way. You can also, if you've not already done so, sign up for text message reminders throughout this challenge. So these would just be reminders about any special events coming up within the challenge. Um, just simply text the word action file and the number one, no spaces, exactly as you see it on the screen, action file one. Text just that one phrase to the phone number 407. 214-4420, and you can get signed up to get reminders for when we go live, reminders for any special events during the challenge, encouragements, all the important stuff so you don't miss a thing. So there we go. Hopefully you can join those text messages. I know for me, life happens and it gets very distracting. So having text message reminders a lot of times for me helps me out so I don't forget things and um, miss anything. Hopefully that'll help you out too. All right, really quickly. Hi, Valerie. Good to see you. She says, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you too, Valerie. So if you don't already know from yesterday, if you missed yesterday's live and have not caught the replay yet, I'm just going to go over super fast what the action file is and how it works. So quick recap from yesterday. While we go over how the action file works, um, you can also visit the challenge schedule page to download the supplies list and action file guide. So head on over to the action, the challenge schedule page, and that's where you can find all of the links for the challenge, the entire schedule, all the good stuff, including a guide that looks like this. And it has the supplies list on it, and it also has a lot of the steps that we'll be talking about this week. So head on over there, download your action file guide, and you can also check out at that same challenge schedule page, that's the place you go for everything. The challenge schedule page also has a link to any of the supplies I recommend. So the action file is one stop for every paper that comes into your home, whether it's mail, it's you cleaned out your purse and there's receipts floating in the bottom, kids brought home something from school, any paper that comes in, the first place it stops in your home is the action file. So this is the place where it gathers and you figure out what the next steps are. It keeps you from having paper piles around the home. And it also keeps you from missing anything that you need to do. So all of those important papers don't get lost before they get processed. So the action file, the reason it's called an action file is because all of the folders within the file are based on the, what the next action is for the paper. 
So unlike traditional filing, where we file by what the paper type is, like is it a bank statement, is it a medical explanation of benefits, is it a bill, we're not filing by what type it is. We're filing by what is the next thing you have to do with the paper. So some of the core folders that we will go over more in depth today would be things like to do, to enter, to read, to scan, to file. It's simply deciding what the next step is for that paper. And that's how we get a few folders to hold so many different papers. And it helps you to batch your work when you're processing your papers. So that is what the action file is. And this is the stop between either finishing a to-do item on a paper or the filing cabinet, basically. So once a paper leaves here, it basically it can go to the trash, the shredder, or the filing cabinet. Those are the places that it ends up going. Until then, it can stay in your action file. And we will go over um, even more in depth the tricks on how to use it, what happens to the paper once it enters, how to remember to process some of these things, how they exit your action file. We'll go over those more in depth on Thursday and Friday of this week. So this is just kind of a preview for you of that. All right, so really quickly, um, let me actually, before I ask you that, I'm gonna go over what the basic supplies were again, right? And really quickly, hi, Ellen. Good to see you as you hop on. Remember, say hi, tell me who you are, where you're joining me from. So some of the main supplies, and remember you can find the supplies list and the shop link if you wanted to see exactly where I found them on the challenge schedule page, but some of your basic supplies that you would need. And I can actually show you on the screen too. So you will need a holder of some sort. So this is my holder that I use in my kitchen for my action file, my own personal one. It's one of my favorites and it sits on the countertop. You can also do wall files. I showed you several types yesterday. Catch the replay of yesterday's live if you wanted to see some more examples. You will also need some file folders. Depending on what kind of holder you get, you will either need hanging file folders or just the regular tabbed file folders. And then, of course, tabs for your file folders. And those are the required supplies, like absolute minimum what you need. You probably already have tabs and file folders around your house, and you might even have a holder that will at least do until you get something that you love. So something to get you started, right? And then some optional supplies. These are some supplies that I like to add in to my action file just to make it easier. So what I like to do is in this first folder, it's not labeled, it's just a folder that basically holds some extra supplies. So within that front folder, I usually have a pencil pouch. And within the pencil pouch, I'll have, you know, a pencil, a pen, a highlighter, um, some, what are those, binder clips so that I can clip papers together, a stapler so I can staple papers together, post-it notes, and sometimes I'll even throw in some stamps. So that way, if there's something that I need to return back in the mail, I've got stamps right there. And if you still write checks for things, you might even want to include your checkbook and just throw them all in a pencil pouch. Another thing that I like to have in that front folder, sometimes, um, depending on if you're an out of sight, out of mind person, you like your lists, note paper for some lists. So that way, if you do need to write notes to yourself for things to do, or if you want to keep track of some of your to-do items that are within your action file, which we'll talk about more in depth on Thursday and Friday, but if you wanted to keep track of some of those, then having a notepad in there is helpful. And then finally, a couple of additional supplies that might be helpful for you. And again, Thursday and Friday, we'll go more in depth into some of these. But if you gather a lot of receipts and you like to keep your receipts, you can have an envelope within that front pocket of receipts for that month. And then throughout the month, you can just keep putting your receipts in that envelope. And then at the end of the month, that envelope can come out of the action file. You could put the next month's envelope in there and keep gathering your receipts. If you still keep physical business cards, a business card holder can be helpful. And if you like to clip and use coupons, then I usually like to have just a coupon holder that I can grab and take to the store with me. And you can even clip to the front of it your grocery list if you wanted. 
So this is a great place to keep your grocery list and your coupons so you can quickly grab those and go to the store and quickly update them if you want. And then finally in that front pocket, I like to have a um, large folder, just a regular folder. Now this is where I would keep things that would be helpful resources for me as I'm processing papers. So if you are a student in the Paper Path course, you'll recognize some of these, like your paper policy that in the Paper Path course, we talk about our paper policy and we build one together that records all of your decisions about your papers so you know what you decided, where to find your papers, how long to keep them. So the paper policy is really good to keep in that folder. Your how long to keep important documents guide. If you're in the paper path course or the path membership, then your how long to keep important documents guide is a great reference. So those are some things that I like to keep right within this front of my action file. So I just put a blank folder in the front and put them right there. Or if you have an action file holder that has a spot for supplies to be held, like maybe a supply holder, then you can keep them right in there. All right, so really quickly, before we go on, that's the overview of the supplies. We talked about some of those yesterday and I gave you some bonus supplies today. But before we go on, tell me of the different types of action file holders that we talked about yesterday. Which one do you prefer? Are you the one who likes A? And just you could just type the letter in the comments. If you like A, that would sit on the desktop or the countertop. Or maybe you're like me uh, for my office. In my office, I have style B, which is one of those cascading ones with a supply holder. And it hangs on the wall. Or maybe you would like something C is the one with like fabric. And it can be like, um, you can have different patterns. And it's great to hide behind a door. Oh, let me pick up the puppy. She's whining. But that's great to have behind a door or in a small space. Or if you're a fashionista and you want it to match your decorations, maybe you like something simple and sleek like D, which means that you would be able to put the top on and hide it when guests are over um, and have it match your decor. I see so far we have Two A's from Maria and somebody on Facebook. We have Peggy says D. She would like the box style. Yeah, I have both A and B that I use for my action files. And I have C behind a door that I hold regular files in. So I like all of them pretty much. Sally says B. She also is a um, the cascading one with the supply holder. Love it. I love that. That's awesome. And really quickly, I'm going to say hi to Pamela. Hi, Pamela. Good to have you here. And Peggy is here from Tampa. She says, glad you're getting over the C curse. Yeah, I'm slowly getting over COVID. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And yeah, we've got lots of A's, B, D. Beth says A and Helen says B. We've got two more votes for A, Melanie and Susan. That's awesome. I always love to hear what your style is. Bobby says D. So Bobby likes the sleek look. Love it. All right. So next... I wanted to talk about your folders, all right? I talked about that there are some core folders that we put in our action file. So the main folders that most action files will use most of, if not all, are these. So the first one would be to do. So to do would be anything that the paper has an action that needs to be done by you that is not included in any of the other folders. So I'll go through the other folders first, and then I'm going to circle back to to-do. So there's to enter. That would be if you have a paper such as a business card, where all you really need to do is just enter that information somewhere else, and then you can let go of the paper. You just have to enter the information off of it. Or maybe you need to enter the information off of it before you file the paper. So something like an insurance policy or um, updated bank information, and it needs to be entered in your Spark Life Finder. That would be an example of to enter. And it would go in there because we're just looking at what our next action is, right? We don't care about what all the actions are, just what's the one that you have to do next. Then there's to read. Sometimes we just need to read it. That could mean that maybe it's a magazine or a brochure and your only action with it is simply to read it. Sometimes it could be something like an insurance policy where you want to read it before you file it just to make sure. 
So if your next action is simply to read it, you don't have to do any other action that you know of yet. After you read it, you might come up with another action. But as of right now, you don't know anything else, then to read is a good one. Now, if you're trying to go paperless and keep some scanned copies, or if you just want some scans as backups, to scan is a good one. So sometimes we want to scan things before they get filed. So to scan, and then every once in a while, you can batch your work, which means basically doing the same type of task all at once. So when you're batching, you can grab all of your to scan papers out of to scan and just start scanning and get through all of those. And then you can grab all of your to enter and enter things in various places. And it just helps with productivity. And then finally to file. Sometimes there's papers that we simply just need to keep. We don't have any actions that we have to do with them. We just have to keep them in case we need them in the future. So that would be what to file would be for. It just simply needs to be filed in your permanent files. So those are some of our core uh, folder types. Now I mentioned that I would circle back to to do. So to do would be anything that has an action that does not fall into to enter, to read, to scan, or to file. If your next action is something like maybe an RSVP and you have to mail it back, or maybe it's a shipping confirmation and you may need to make sure that the item was received. If it's a to-do that is not where you just have to enter information, you don't just have to read it, you don't need to scan it or file it yet, there's something you need to do before then, then it can go into do. So those are our core folders. Now, really quickly, if you are enjoying this challenge, if you're enjoying these videos, then please do me a favor, click share, share these with your friends, maybe shoot them an email uh, with the link or share it on social media, because the more people that can get a handle on their incoming papers and feel more confident and in control, the better, right? So anybody that you think could really use this, please share it with them. Um, all right, really quickly, Sherry, when I asked what type of action file you love, she likes them all. D, then B, then A, then C. She says, I'm an office supplies junkie. I can be an office supplies junkie sometimes too. I have to rein myself in all the time because there's so many fun supplies out there. I hear you. Terry says D. And Judy says, I'm temporarily using a graduating cascade style that sits on the desk. Perfect. That's fantastic use whatever you have at least to get started. So you're rocking that, Judy. Love, love, love that. Woo, woo. And then Mary says that she likes style B, that cascading one with the supply holder. Love it. Pardon the dog. She found a new toy. <laughs> you might hear her in the background. Sorry about that. Okay. So in addition to, or instead of a few of those core folder types, let's talk about adding other folders. So with the action file, the goal of the action file is to have 10 choices or fewer, all right? You only want 10 folders at the most in your action file because once we get past 10, then our brain has to think a lot harder to decide where that piece of paper will go. It has too many choices. So the fewer choices we can give our brain the easier it is to make that choice because the categories are much broader. It makes it much more simple. If you have too many folders, then some of those actions might start to overlap, starts to get kind of hazy as far as which folder a paper should go in, and it makes it much more difficult and your system's more likely to fail because we're humans, right? I know I am. And if it's hard and if I have to think too hard about it, I'll put it off till later. And that's when you might find yourself putting your mail on top of your action file or next to it and not really getting it into the file. So 10 folders or fewer, the fewer, the better. And that's going to make this more successful. And then remember, when you're adding any new folders, as much as you possibly can, the folder should be action based because remember, it's called an action file, right? So each folder should be able to start with the word to because an action would be something that's an action that you need to do. And that would start with to like to read. I need to read it. I need to enter it. I need to do it. I need to file it. So if you can't put the word to in front of the name of the folder, then it might not be the best name for a folder in your action file. But let's talk about some of these custom folder ideas, okay? So a few of them 
that I hear people use a lot. One would be to call. So if you have a lot of phone calls you end up having to make, maybe you're a caregiver and you have a lot of doctor's appointments to set and insurance things to follow up on, things like that, then to call could possibly be one of your folders. And anything that your next step is to make a phone call about it can go in that folder. One could be to follow up. If there are a lot of things that you find that you have pending, where you need to make sure that it got processed or you need to follow up with somebody and get information. If you find that you're getting a lot of that category, then a to follow up folder might be really helpful for you. So that way you know that your, your side of it is done and you're waiting on somebody else. Now, if you have kids, um, then to mom is a really good one because that way when they come home from school with papers, then they can just put them right in the to mom folder. And then every evening you can pop open that folder and see whatever needs to go to mom. Uh, this also works with other people in the household. So if you come in with the mail and you wanted to make sure that your husband sees his mail, maybe it's, you know, to my husband, I call him moose pie. Maybe it would be to moose pie and I could put all of his mail in there and then he can see what he has before he sorts it into the action file. Um, so, if it goes to a specific person and it's not something that you would actually process, then you could have a folder for them. Now, another one, if you still manually pay bills or if you like to keep your payments separate, then to pay can be a good folder. And that way, any papers that you have to pay the bill or follow up to make sure that the auto payment processed could go into pay. And then that way your payments are separated. To research, if you're the type of person, and I know that we have a lot of you out there, who like to research multiple things. You know, if you like to research, okay, well, I need a new desktop fan, and I'm trying to figure out which one. So I'm gathering some information to research which one I want, or maybe medical issues, and you like to research things. If the next step is just to research something further, and you find that you have a lot of those types of papers, to research might be a good one for you. Now, we're going to talk about where to put your action file tomorrow, but if you don't have a shredder near your action file or at all, then you might want just a file folder called to shred. And that way you can dump anything that just needs to be shred into your to shred folder. And whenever it starts to get full, you could take it to the shredder or burn it or whatever you do to destroy papers. Now, if you love to try new things, whether it's new craft ideas, maybe new exercises or new products or recipes are a big one, then to try might be a good one for you. So any new recipes that you wanted to try out, any new craft ideas that you wanted to try out, you could put it into try. And that way, when you're looking for that fun new recipe for the night, you can go through your to try folder and pull things out. So those are some of the action files that might apply to you. Now, if you don't have a lot of papers that would go into a category, then you probably don't need a whole folder for it. The to-do folder is probably enough. So only add custom folders if you have a lot of those papers that would go into those folders. Um, again, we're trying to keep it to 10 folders or fewer. So if there would only be one or two papers that would hit that folder, you probably don't need a whole folder for it. The to-do folder is probably enough. But if you do have a large amount, then try some of these custom folders. All right, before we go on to a couple of other examples of some folders that might be helpful for unique situations, tell me, do you have a lot of paper piles? So in the comments, let me know if you have a lot of paper piles in your home or if you don't really have a lot that's great. And tell me about, you know, what your paper situation is in, at your house. I would love to hear that. And also click the heart or the like button uh, if you're enjoying this. I always love, um, I love to share this information and the more people that like it, the more I can share it. And if you are on YouTube, if you've not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Somewhere below the video, there's a subscribe button. There we go. Let me get out of its way. <laughs> Somewhere below the video, there's a subscribe button. And hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when I go live and whenever I post a video. 
Okay, really quickly, in the comments, I asked about those paper piles, right? And if you have a lot of paper piles, so Beth says, so many. You are not alone, Beth. You are in the right place. <laughs> I know so many of us do. Judy says, yes. And Barbara says, a dire paper situation. Barbara also says, yes. You know, I will let you know a secret. I was not born organized. I struggled so much when I was younger. Um, through college and even into young adulthood, I had a really hard time with organizing, especially papers. And I had so many times in my life where I think a dire paper situation, like Barbara said, was a really good description of what I was going through. And I had to create a lot of these different methods, like the action file and the paper path course and the spark life binder. I had to create a lot of these for me <laughs> because these were things that I needed that weren't out there at the time. So that's why I created things like the Spark Life Finder, the Paper Path course, the Action File. It's because this is not something that came easy to me either. So I have been buried in papers before myself. Thankfully, I have not been for several decades now because I've got all these things in place. And that's why I love to teach other people about their papers. But yeah, you are not alone if you have those paper piles. And I'm proof with ADHD, uh, daughter, business, busy life, even with COVID <laughs> and travel and things like that, I'm able to keep track of my papers and streamline it and not get lost in piles anymore. And so can you. It's just going to take some time. And hopefully things like the Paper Path course and the Path membership, Spark Life Binder, and of course this week, like we're talking about the action file, hopefully these will help you too because there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you're in the right place. Jackie says that, yes, she has tons of piles and boxes that she needs to sort through. You've got this. Oh, and look at you. I see you're a Hawkeye. I was born in Iowa. My dad has, you know, every Christmas it's like a Hawkeye celebration. All of his presents have the Hawkeye symbol. I love it, Jackie. So welcome, welcome, Iowa gal. Melanie says, if you have to quote unquote, make a file that will go in the filing cabinet, like a new credit card, and I file any info that comes in on that card, would that go into to do then when the file is made, go into file? You know, Melanie, I would probably just put it into the file folder. And then when you're filing, you'll see that there's no folder for it. And right then you can create it. So that's a really good question because that is kind of on the line, right? You do need to make the folder. But the nice thing is when you go to file, you'll already be at the file cabinet. So I think that's one of the few times that I would just skip to the end, put it right in that to file folder. And then when you go to file papers, if you find that something needs a file folder, you can create it then. So really good question. Love that one because it is kind of a blurry line there. Millie says, yes, I have paper piles. Uh, Sherry sent tons of hearts. Love it. I love the rainbow hearts. And Jackie says, thanks. Go Hawks. Woo -woo. Yes, go Hawks. Love it. <laughs> All right. So I told you that, that sometimes there are some special situations that might require a folder that's not an action. And these should be few and far between. So before adding any non-action files or any more than 10 files to your action file, really, really think hard. You absolutely need that file. But sometimes there's a project going on and you need a folder specifically for that project, whether temporarily or maybe it's a specific project that's simply always ongoing, right? So some of the ideas for this, coupons. If you're a big couponer, a lot of times I do like to have just like a, a little folder that I can put coupons in as soon as they come in. And then you can even clip your grocery list to it. So that way you can grab the whole thing to the store. And I put that in the very front pocket. So that's one option for coupons. But... If you have too many, if you need something to really quickly put coupons in, you could possibly, if you're a big couponer, have a coupons file folder. Another one would be taxes. So taxes during the year, there are certain times of the year where you are going to have more tax papers coming in. So you probably don't want one in the file for the entire year, but maybe starting January 1st, you put a taxes folder in your action file until you are done filing your taxes for the year. So that way, any tax forms that you receive, and if you don't have a whole lot, then they can simply go in the to-do folder 
and when you do your taxes, you can pull them out. But if you have a lot, then you can consider having just a taxes folder that's in there until you've got your taxes filed for the year. So that way they're separated and they don't get mixed in with other papers and you can tell when you have everything. Um, within the paper path course, I have an entire rather large section in the special papers section. So if you're already a student, um, I have an entire section on how to organize your papers for taxes for generally U.S. taxes, but it can be adapted to other countries. But if you are one of the students in the paper path course, make sure to check out the special paper section and check out taxes because I talk about how to prepare for your taxes and keep your papers organized and your information organized as you prepare. And then I also talk about how to store your tax information, all of those papers and documents after you filed your taxes and how to you know, purge them, all of that stuff. So check that out in the paper path course if you are a student. And then sometimes you have a special project going on. Maybe you're remodeling your kitchen, right? So during the kitchen remodeling, it might help to have just one folder in your action file for all of the quotes and the blueprints and different ideas and all of that progress for that one specific project. So if you do have a special project like your kitchen remodel, that might be something that can go in your action file. Another option would be maybe if you do have a lot that has to be done with medical papers, then having one file for medical and anything that you have to do that has to do with medical, that besides just to file, if it has something that you have to do, you could keep it in the medical folder. So those are some specific project-based folders that might be helpful. There are other ones that I'm sure will come up for various people. Just think it through and think what's going to be best for you and try to stay under that 10 folder max. So, so really quickly about paper piles that asked if you have a lot of piles. Terry says, yes, piles for mini projects and struggling with dad's estate papers from 59 file drawers. Oh, she says, as the executor with five siblings, she feels a responsibility to know what to keep and if, how, and where to file them. 59 file drawers. Oh, I'm so sorry, Terry. I'm sorry that you lost your father, and I'm sorry that you're going through that. That is overwhelming. So, yeah, within the Paper Path course, we talk a lot also, a whole section about purging papers and creating a purge schedule. That's what the paper policy also goes through when we set up our paper policy, we talk about how long we're going to keep it. So that way we aren't going to leave our loved ones with an excessive amount of old expired papers. And it's going to keep your own file drawers lean. So that way you aren't getting overstuffed. So hopefully that helps. Uh, on Facebook, somebody says, many paper piles can't stay ahead of it. Yeah, hopefully the action file can help because the first step to staying ahead of the paper piles is giving your papers a home as soon as they come into your house so they don't hit the pile, right? So hopefully the action file will help you at least with that first step. And then future steps, as far as the rest of your papers, the paper path course that's available this week only, that might help out as well. Because I go step by step, it's called a path, because I lead you down a path one step at a time of how to organize all the papers in your home. So hopefully those help you out. All right, let's talk really quickly about just some best practices to remember when we are dealing with our action file, okay? So some of the best practices, I'm going to remind you again and again about this one because it's really important. This is the make it or break it, is 10 folders or fewer in your action file. Too many folders and your brain has to start to make too many decisions. The lines get blurry and it gets too hard. So 10 folders or fewer, that way you can be more consistent and your brain can have an easier time of it. Also, if you're adding folders to your action file, make sure that they are action-based. So can you wor use the word to in front of the title of your folder? If so, it's probably action-based. So in general, we want, if we can, all of our folders to have an action. They should all be named after an action. There are very few that I told you special circumstances where it would not be an action. All right. So tell me in the comments, what special folders will you add to your action file? Maybe it's one that I mentioned, or maybe it's one that I've never even thought of. So 
tell me what special folders you will be adding to your action file. And while you do that, I am going to check the comments and then do a quick recap for you. And we will wrap this up. Really quickly in the comments, ah, oh, Terry says, thank you. Ah, oh, you're welcome, Terry. I'm glad you're here. Maria says, did you say when to look at the action file? I have not said that yet. So we will be talking about how to use it and make it stick on Thursday and Friday. So tomorrow we're talking about where to keep it, uh, where to put it in your home to make sure that you can reach it and how to train yourself to use it and remember to use it. And then Thursday, we will talk about how to actually use it. So that's when I will talk about when you're going to look at your action file, gives you some tricks on how to not forget to do those to-do items and get things back out of it. And then on Friday, I'm going to share even more ways to make it stick and help it become a habit without making it quite as hard. Because the hardest part is just getting used to using it, right? So stick with me for tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday, and we'll talk about that. And then Saturday, we are setting it up and practicing using it and answering any questions during our public group hike, where you can join me. If you go to the challenge schedule page, then you can sign up and register for the free public group hike, where we'll hop on Zoom. You can do whatever project you're working on, and I'll be there to answer any questions for you. But it's a great chance to practice using it, get some answers right then. And then on Sunday, we'll talk a bit about what to do with the rest of your papers, what file systems you need um, to have in your paper flow, all of that really good information about how to set up an easy to maintain, simple, but super effective file system overall and where the action file fits with the rest of the file system. So hopefully that helps. Great question, Maria. All right, so tell me what special folders you will be adding to your action file. Let me know that in the comments. And really quick, a recap. So we talked about how the action file works, that all of the folders are actions. When a paper comes into your home, you figure out what the next action is that you need to do with that paper and put it in the appropriate folder, right? And we talked about that on the challenge schedule page, you can download the supplies list and the action file guide and get all the steps and all that stuff for free, right? Then we talked about the core folders, the main folders that you'll probably use within your action file. You might use all five of them. You might only use four of them, um, but the main folders are, everybody will probably need one called to do or something similar. To enter, if you have information that just needs to be entered elsewhere. To read, if your next step is you just need to read it to scan if you are trying to scan papers either before you file them or instead of keeping the paper copy, and then to file for any papers that you simply need to keep the paper copy, but there's no other action that you need to do with it right now. Then we talked about some custom action file folders. And in the comments, you're telling me what custom folders you think you would add to your own file system. But customizing your action file folders, we remember, 10 or fewer files in your action file and try to make them all action based, right? But some ideas were things like to call, to follow up, to mom, to pay, to research, to shred, to try. So those were all action based custom folders that you might want to add to your system. And then sometimes there are project based folders. So something like taxes or medical or a special project like a kitchen remodel. So those were the main folders that you will add to your action file. So once you figured out what your folders are, it's super easy to build it. Simply label your folders and put them in your holder. And then you're done. You can gather your additional supplies if you want to, if you have a pencil pouch with some of those extra supplies that I talked about yesterday and today. Um, remember those uh, on the challenge schedule page, the link for the challenge schedule page is in the description of this video, as well as um, you can type it in, it's on the screen right now. But that challenge page has all the links to everything. So when you check out the challenge page, it will have each day, it shows what the events are for the day, and it will give you all, oops, it will give you all of the different um, links to any events, links to any downloads. You can register for the public group hike. 
you can register for anything else going on. And yeah, the challenge schedule page, that's the one page you need to bookmark and go back to as often as you can. And that is also mentioned in your emails. If you're registered for the challenge, then in your emails, I've sent the link to the challenge schedule page as well. So check out the challenge schedule page. That is also where you can register for the free public group hike. The public group hike is this Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern time. So this Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern time, you can hop in anytime during that time period. You don't have to start at 11 or end at 2. Hop in, hop out. But we'll be on Zoom. I'll put on some music. We'll take breaks. I'll share tips. I'll answer questions. But we'll work side by side on whatever project you want to bring. The Action File is a great project to bring. You can bring some papers to sort into your Action File or just papers to sort in general. But whatever project you want to do, as long as it's productive, it counts. You could be prepping dinner for the week, whatever. But that public group hike is a great place to start. And we'll all hop on Zoom. You'll see some of us on camera while we're working in the background and just having a lot of fun. And it helps us get so much more done when there's people that feel like they're around us. So the public group hike, you can register for free for that on the challenge schedule page. And the group hikes are one of the benefits of being a PATH member. So normally those are just for PATH members. And then also there's a Q&A session right after that. I call it office hours. And if you have any questions about the paper PATH course, the PATH membership, the action file, that's when you can hop in and ask your question and I'll answer it live on video. So there's going to be a link to that on the challenge schedule page as well. All right, really quickly in the comments, I asked what type of additional folders you will be adding to your action file. So Robert says coupons, gonna add a coupons file folder. Melly says special folder for me, upcoming pet sits. Oh, that's so fun. She says, I'm a pet sitter and have a folder for each client. I've been putting the upcoming pet sits folders in the back of the action file. So now I just labeled it. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, pet setting is, that's a super, super fun job. I would love to do that one of these days. And you are very, very needed. <laughs> this past trip that I had, our pet setter understandably had an emergency with her own pet and had to cancel at the last minute. And boy, struggled to find a pet sitter that we really trusted. And you guys are like gold. <laughs> so that's great, Melanie. Terry says she'll add a to call and add some core projects. Yay. <laughs> Sherry says about the group hike. Sherry's been to several of the group hikes. She's a Pathfinder. So one of our Path members. And she says she'll put on great music. Sherry and I always love to comment on how the music is just super fun to work to. And Beth says that she will add to pay taxes and to contact. Oh, I love that. Super, super good. Well, you are doing absolutely amazing throughout this challenge. This is only day two, and you've already gotten a start at building your action file. Hopefully today, if you get a chance, you can just simply assemble it super fast. It is okay if you aren't sure all of the special folders that you're going to add yet. Get at least the core folders that you think will work for you in your action file, and then start using it. Start using it as soon as you can, and as you find, that there are certain papers that you have an overwhelming amount of, that's when you can add some special folders. So don't worry if you don't know right now all of the folders that you will need. You will figure that out as you go. So start with the core ones at least. Get it built, right? At least find a container and at least find five folders that can sit in that container and label them with those core labels so that you can at least get started. And then from there, you can keep refining it and perfecting it as you go. So this is not something that it's a one and done, has to stay that way for the rest of your life, end of your life decision. <laughs> so just get started with what you've got today and check out the challenge schedule page. That way you can see all of the different events coming up. You can watch any replays of these videos throughout the week. You can sign up for the public group hike, the question and answer session, see everything that's new coming up. Tomorrow we will talk about where to put your action file and how to make sure that it's placed in a way that you can start really using it and not forget to check it or to put your things in it. All right. So thank you so much for being super awesome. I love you to bits. And I will, oops, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now. Oh, and if you're a PATH member, remember 
that at 2 p.m. today, that's in about 15 minutes, 2 p.m. Eastern, we have our office hours session for our PATH members. So if you have any questions about organizing at all or even productivity, then you can hop in between the hours of 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time today. Um, hop in using your member link and I will answer your questions live for you. And then you can check out the replay afterwards. All right. Love you bunches. See you soon. Bye-bye now.